I want to talk to you about uh, Equifax inquiry removal hacks, and uh, it's a kind of important because uh, Equifax actually has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, reports, a lot of complaints about uh, inquiry removals in the last three years, especially uh, since COVID ended. So uh, it's important to have uh, to to have the right hacks when it comes to uh, Equifax inquiry removal. So here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. So first of all, when we talk about a, an Equifax ec in inquiry removal, it's important to understand that you are talking about a uh, credit report dispute. In other words, you are disputing your Equifax credit report. Okay, so when we talk about a credit report dispute, this is actually a, a circumstance whereby you are asking Equifax to investigate information on your credit report that seems inaccurate or incorrect to you. That's kind of important because uh, if you get that wrong, you are really toast, you know, going forward. So let me repeat that. A credit report dispute through Equifax is when you ask Equifax to investigate information on your credit report that seems inaccurate or incorrect to you. To you. You should regularly review things on your credit report, such as personal information, credit accounts, you know, collections, bankruptcies, and credit inquiries. And you should also file a credit dispute if you see information that seems like it needs to be more accurate or correct. Okay. So how does the whole thing work? When we talk about uh, Equifax inquiry removal, it's important to understand that everything revolves around credit report dispute. And uh, the, the process is, pre is pretty uh, streamlined with Equifax. And they actually, uh, before COVID, they didn't have a pretty streamlined, uh, a pretty stream, a pretty streamlined inquiry removal process. But during COVID, they, they saw a lot. They saw a jump in uh, complaints, and so they actually had to come up with uh, controls and processes to sort of uh, to really uh, tame those uh, those th that complaint growth, if you will. So going forward, when we talk about Equifax inquiry removal, you have a pretty methodical uh, process in place. So you number one you want to check your credit report so checking your credit report can help you spot information that may that may be uh, inaccurate or incomplete then you need to uh, file a dispute for free so if you see information on your Equifax credit report that you believe is is uh, inaccurate or incomplete you simply file a dispute and uh, Equifax promises to look into uh, the whole uh, thing right away so they will actually will uh, initiate an, an investigation in-house and then uh, what happens here is that you get you get the results within uh, 30 days. So once you have submitted a dispute, they will investigate and return your results within 30 days, and uh, you will you will see updates to your credit report. If they find that information on your credit report needs to be updated, they will take care of it. Boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. I want to talk to you about them. Uh, when we talk about Equifax inquiry removal, there are certain things you need to really know to uh, be to be able to uh, navigate the process uh, in uh, like seamlessly. And so, when you review your credit report with uh, with an aim of uh, initiating an Equifax inquiry removal, it's important to understand that uh, there are a few things you need to pay attention to that may change from month to month. So we are speaking about. Uh, personal information such as your name, social security number, aliases or former names, current and former addresses, and sometimes your current and former employers. You may also have account information including payment history, account balances and limits, and dates the accounts were opened or closed. This includes uh, credit accounts that may be in your name such as credit cards, mortgages, student loans, and vehicle loans. You may also look at the bankruptcies and accounts in collections and also uh, inquiries which list the lenders and other companies that have access to your credit report. So those are sort of, uh, you, so you have a constellation of uh, possibilities there to know exactly what's happening. So as you look at your uh, Equifax credit report, you need to keep the following in mind. Because remember, you're not just looking at the Equifax credit report just uh, for fun, right? You're, you're trying to see whether or not there is an inquiry removal uh, sort of uh, potential here. So that you have to keep a, a certain things, uh, a certain uh, number of things in mind. In the personal information section of your credit report, is your name listed accurately and your address up to date? So you wanna pay attention to the content here. 
In the account information portion of your credit report, are the accounts listed complete and accurate? So you want to have accuracy and completion of data here. And uh, if any of the information is inaccurate or incomplete, it is important to contact the lender first or a creditor that issue the account. So that, that's what that's what uh, professionals call data provider. So, uh, so you want to first start that way or the nationwide credit bureau that issued the credit report in the first place. In this case, we are speaking about Equifax. So before you contact Equifax for an inquiry removal procedure, you first want to contact the, the, the merchant and then the lender. So th there is actually a hierarchy of uh, steps to follow so that you are sure that you are getting your, your data looked at really, really fast. Boss, I want to talk to you about uh, today's topic. We are having a, co a conversation about Equifax inquiry, inquiry removal. So I'm giving you a few hacks so you have a clear idea of what to do if you're trying to clean, uh, clean up slate. I want to talk to you about uh, if you are trying to have an Equifax inquiry removal, that means that you are actually a providing, a, you are triggering a dispute, right? You are asking Equifax to remove uh, inquiries from your uh, from your credit from your, from your credit report. So that goes that has to go through a, a dispute. So when you file a dispute, you'll need to provide some documentation, right? You can't just tell them, "Hey, listen." Remove this inquiry, remove that inquiry. I don't like it. No, it doesn't work that way. Basically, you got to really back up whatever you say. So what you will need, it depends on what information you may be disputing because uh, every dispute is kind of different, right? I mean, uh, some uh, some disputes actually call for a stronger level of, uh, of uh, evidence, a stronger level of uh, data, while others are kind of are kind of like more uh, are lighter in terms of evidence requests. So, uh, so let me give you some examples of uh, the types of documents that Equifax may need copies of during their investigation. Because for them to validate your uh, your uh, your request, they gotta see data, they gotta see uh, evidence. Okay. So for personal information, if you ask them to actually uh, remove anything around your personal information, they will want to see a, a valid driver's license, a birth certificate or a copy of a utility bill, depending upon the type of personal information you want them to change or you want them to remove. For account information, they will love to have uh, current bank statements with account information, with your name, of course. They will love to see uh, letters from a lender showing an account has been corrected and proof that, a, that an account was the result of identity theft. That's why we always tell our clients when you actually have identity theft, you you want to file a complaint with the local with the local law enforcement, but also uh, the C, the CFPB, okay. And uh, in the other information category, because uh, there are cases where you might want uh, Equifax to look at other information, so they will want to get from you bankruptcy schedules or other court documents student loan disability letters or canceled checks. So uh, those, this is actually, uh, those are the standards. So if you are initiating an Equifax inquiry removal, you really need to understand that uh, the, dis the dispute process goes, th goes through a certain uh, certain set of milestones okay there is a method that comes with an equifax inquiry removal and it's important for you to really understand you got to set your expectations straight don't you don't you try to really have all kinds of uh, unreasonable expectations when it comes to an equifax inquiry removal as to uh, how quick the uh, the uh, inquiries will, re will be removed or what type of data can be removed in the first place so what should you expect after filing a dispute? Once you have successfully filed your, your credit dispute, you should expect the following to happen. So you're going to have number one, a confirmation code. So you will receive a 10 digit confirmation code for future reference. So you can check your status anytime within your Equifax, your My Equifax account. So when you ask Equifax to remove your inquiry, that 
10 digit confirmation code is actually the foundation of everything okay that's where you know what's really happening with uh equifax what they're doing on your account if they are going to remove the specific inquiry or inquiries you want them to remove in the first place and so the first thing is confirmation code okay second thing is that investigating your dispute so when uh, reviewing your dispute if they are able if equifax is able to uh, make changes to your credit report based on the information you provided they will do so automatically they're not going to even waste time like uh to uh because they have they have up to uh, two months to review everything okay but uh otherwise if, if they can't really uh confirm or validate things uh, independently they will uh, contact the reporting company the data provider the data furnisher to verify the accuracy of the information you are disputing in the first place so th that's the second step the third step is you have results in 30 days so within 30 days of your uh 30 days of uh, your dispute basically uh, equifax will uh, notify you of the results of uh, your dispute investigation boss i want to quickly remind you of today's topic we are having a conversation about equifax inquiry removal how do things work with uh, this credit bureau Now, let's talk about the fact that when we talk about the credit report disputes with uh, Equifax in the first place, everything is everything revolves around your ability to provide proof, right? You can't just uh, ask Equifax to uh, to remove inquiries uh, off your credit reports without providing proof. And uh, so for you to provide to actually provide the proof, you got to really uh, monitor. You got to be in a situation where when you actually set your budget, I mean, you, you got to have the proper budget routine the proper financial routines and part of that financial routine is that uh, is actually for you to uh, monitor uh, let's say check your credit reports okay and when we talk about checking your credit reports not don't just check your equifax credit report you want to check all three you want to check all three so you have a clear idea that something that if because if something is amiss with one credit report chances are you got to investigate to make sure it doesn't affect the, the other two credit reports let me give you an example if you actually check your uh, three credit reports and realize that something is uh, showing is showing up on uh, your TransUnion credit report, but not showing up on Equifax or Experian, you might be thinking, "Well, this is just uh, a, a temporary issue. I mean, or this, this this could be a time issue." In other words, at some point, that specific TransUnion issue or hiccup will actually show on your your Experian or Equifax. So that's why you want to have a three bureau credit monitoring so you have a clear idea what's really happening you have a you have a bird's eye view of what's really happening and you you can act real fast remember that you actually uh are entitled to a free copy of the credit report from each of the three nationwide credit bureaus every 12 months by visiting a website called annualcreditreport.com you can also create a, a my equifax account to get a six free equifax credit reports per year so once you have created an account, you can click on the get my free credit score on your on uh, your my Equifax dashboard and enroll in Equifax core credit to get a monthly month to get a monthly uh, Equifax credit report and a free monthly Vantage score credit score based on Equifax data. Remember that a Vantage score is one of uh, many types of credit scores. It's not as popular as a uh, FICO score, but hey, listen, it is still uh, it is still something. And uh, it's one of those things where by knowing, uh, by having an idea of of uh, your credit score, you know whether or not you are in the right direction or not. So when we, when we talk about Equifax inquiry removal, you really need to understand that you can have uh, all kinds of uh, inquiries you can remove from your credit reports in other words you can have all kinds of information you can dispute on your equifax credit report so you can dispute uh, personal information so your name addresses social security number and or date of birth but don't forget that you gotta really bring uh, the proper evidence for equifax to remove those inquiries okay you can have uh, if you believe account information uh, is inaccurate or incomplete this is actually uh, this is grounds for Equifax inquiry removal procedure. For example, 
if late payments are being reported on one of your accounts but you have always paid your balance on time and in full then uh, you 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 have uh, the possibility to uh, to initiate an inquiry removal i mean you also have for instance uh, mixed credit files so if someone else's information has been reported on your credit file this may happen if a father and son senior and junior have uh, the same name for instance you know so those are possibilities if you have a, a duplicate reporting of an item this is really uh and uh, a circumstance where you can initiate an Equifax inquiry removal. One example might be a debt listed twice. Okay. You can also have information that may, they may indicate fraud or identity theft. So this will be uh, credit accounts, including collection accounts on your credit reports that you don't recognize. So, so this is really important. So the thing is, if you don't recognize an inquiry on your credit reports, you have you have uh, the ability to actually uh, you you can really uh, contact uh, first you contact the lender and then you can contact the merchant okay the uh, under the fair credit reporting act the three nationwide credit bureaus must retain a record of who has accessed your credit reports and uh, the Equifax guideline is to retain most inquiries for up to two years although some um, are maintained for just one year. So, uh, so if you don't recognize an inquiry, you want to contact the specific company that requested your credit report for an, an explanation. It's all about asking them what's really happening here. Why are they accessing your decision by uh, showing you? Uh, because when we because we could not talk about Equifax inquiry removal without showing you uh, the actual dispute request form, so you have a clear idea what really happens. Okay, how do you initiate a, a, an inquiry removal? Everything doesn't happen. Nothing happens over the phone. I mean, you you can contact Equifax. They'll give you data about your about your about your, your credit report, blah blah blah. But if you want to initiate things, you gotta send things. Uh, it's better to send things in writing. Okay. So I want to show you that this the Equifax dispute request form. So you can see on the screen here. This is the first screenshot. I, I will show you. I'll show you a series of of uh, of uh, of uh, screenshots. Because uh, the form actually is this dispute re request form is has a uh, four pages, so here is a first screenshot. So you you can see that Equifax is asking you about the uh, identification information, your first name, last name, you know, the middle initial, and blah blah blah, the current address, the city, the, the state of zip, and your social security number, and also your date of birth. Okay, and then right now here that Equifax wants you to really uh, attach. A series of a, like a evidence of identity so this can be your social security card based up with a social security number or w2 or 1099 form now if you have a pay stub and you don't have your social security number they're not going to process it so you got to have your social security number when you have a pay stub so for a proof of, of identity that's those are the three for proof of address they are looking at the driver's license or state identification card rental lease agreement house deed pay stub with address utility or phone bill so this could be gas electric water cable mobile so you have a, a lot of uh, possibilities there and uh, you can send actually everything to equifax information services llc p.o box 740256 atlanta georgia 30374 i want to show you the second sc the screenshot this is actually the second page of the uh, dispute form so you have the fraud if you have been a victim of fraud or identity theft you want to you want to fill out this section the third screenshot i want to show you here is uh your credit account information so you want to put the the dispute one you want to put the company name the account number so if you have you have to do this for every dispute that you have so if you tell an equifax to remove inquiry from uh, inquiries from uh, your uh, credit report you got to really go through this so with the dis dispute one next you have dispute two the process is kind of similar you have dispute three you have dispute four dispute five you have dispute six dispute seven dispute eight Dispute 9, Dispute 10, 
this period 11, this period 12. Now, the reason why I'm showing you all this is so that you have a clear idea about how long the form itself is. So if you're trying to initiate an Equifax inquiry removal, yes, you can call the company, you can call the Equifax, you can call the data furniture, but at some point you got to go through uh, the form that I just showed you and initiate a dispute, an official dispute. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Today, I was, I'll just talk to you about an Equifax inquiry removal and I give you the overview and uh, now I'm doing the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I will see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.